Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here on behalf of my creative year for the monthly prompt for July 2019. I got the coolest stuff as Happy Mail from Cindy Utter, and there were two of them, but I'm showing you the one that I didn't do. This month's prompt has to do with architecture and I know this sounds kind of silly, but those of you who belong to the Facebook group, or even those of you who don't, we do a monthly prompt. There's a monthly word prompt. And every week for all of us that are involved in it, each week our word is related to something that relates to the monthly prompt. So the month of um, July was architecture. I can remember that I used the word... Victorian and Gothic. Those are all forms of architecture, styles of architecture. Um, I'm not sure what the style is of the one that I'm going to be using today, but it's so cool. So I'm going to show you what I got. I got two of these that were on the same sheet of paper. Let me, I'm out as far as I can go. Um, and it is a giant stencil of a building. It looks like almost like a row home, but I think it is some kind of an official building because row houses usually don't have all this extra doodahs on the top. They like kind of stop there, you know, like that. Okay, so she sent me two and I decided since I'm on a kick with quilling that I wanted to quill on the paper. So the video is about how to quill on something you've already painted. So these are the things that I used, of course, paper scissors, my little uh, ruler that has, there you go, put it there, my little ruler that has all the circle sizes, one through six, zero th through six, tweezers, because I always get gluey, messy, sticky fingers, and if it's something small and you need to hold it for a second while you're waiting for the glue to um, adhere, it's great to use these tweezers, and no, they're not sharp tweezers. You know, they're blunted on the end. You don't need anything fancy. You can use the stuff you pluck your whiskers with. <laughs> Women of a certain age. A pencil with an eraser, just in case. And then, I think I said in a past video about paper where the color does not go all the way through. But this is a special kind of paper that I bought from, I think I got it from Quill Creations. And it came in different, I ordered different color packs. So these are a bunch of color packs that were combined. And this is paper that is quilling paper that has not been sliced up. So it's sheets of it in case you need wider pieces, you can cut your own. And that's what I did because I did not have red and I wasn't going to order any more quilling stuff. I did not have red, so I took the red sheets and cut them into one quarter inch strips on my paper cutter. So that's what this stuff is, and this one went wonky. It's not, it's bigger at the top than the bottom. Great paper bead. So here they are, my leftovers from my project, um, the one quarter inch stuff. And I think I also mentioned in a previous video that this stuff never goes to waste, that I put it back into some kind of a container and save it up, and then I make... Um, all kinds of other stuff with the leftover pieces, except for, you know, these itty-bitty ones. Th those absolutely go in the trash. I'm not going to save every, everything. That's just, for me, that's just crazy. So, there we go. And so, I'm going to fast forward through this because this project took about three hours, and I'm going to try to condense, I think I recorded for like two and a half, two, two and a half hours. But the total amount I spent on it was about three hours. Um... So I'm going to fast forward through all of it and then come back at the end and talk about it for a second. There won't be a whole lot to say. All right, so let me get on with it. See you on the other side.
So I'm back here with um, the look of the final piece, and here it is. It looked kind of like a church, but I'm not really sure. It had a steeple on the top of it. Let me move you in closer. It had a steeple on the top. Can you see that? I probably should have put those little strips in there that I glued together to cover up the painty part here, but I'm going to let it go. Then... These were all done with basic shapes and paper that stood up on its side. So you can see it better. I didn't really put anything. There's a couple things that I made weird shapes to fit them in there. And these two are the ones I think you're in the video. You'll see me shoving them in there. I just wanted to fill up the space. And these two right here, one is wound a little tighter than the other and unrolled a little bit better. But it was only to fill in the space. Um... These were done this way on purpose. Then I did the little diamonds and triangles. Those were done on purpose. And the little squares. Um, and the rest of it is paper that stands up on end. But I did, instead of doing one layer like what I did on the outside that seems very flimsy to me, uh, I took four layers of the paper, then took my tweezers, like it shows in the video, and did a ran some glue on the paper itself and then held it like this in place held it like that in place till the glue kind of got a grip on it. It was a lot of fun to do. I don't know if I'll ever do it again, but I thought it was very cool to do this and it just so happened that she sent the uh, Cindy sent me this stuff cuz I thought they were very cool houses. I love houses. And I thought, well, let me do something quilling on it. I think I might like to use this on the front of a traveler's journal or something about that size. So I will probably cut away a lot of the, you know, excess. I did this on cardstock because it was more durable than just paper. So I'm thinking I might put this on a traveler's journal. Let's see. I have one here. Let's see if it'll fit. I'm thinking about it. Oop, too tall. So here's the bottom. That's not going to work. So what I will do is I will find some kind of a book, a handmade book, and use it on the front. Or I could make a book this wide 
and use this on the uh, spine of the book. Boy, that's going to be a honking book, huh? <laughs> that's going to be a doozy. Anyway, so these are just ideas that I toyed around with this. And I had a good time making it, and I realized that I'm not very good at... I'm, I'm not consistent with stuff when I rush, and this was kind of rushing. But it's done, and I thought it was a cool experiment. You don't have to be a great quiller to make some kind of a shape, pinch it, and glue it down. You, you don't have to have a whole lot of refined motor skills, I don't think, to do this. See, there's the side view of it. Alrighty, so that's it. So I will see you guys uh, in the beginning of August for my muse for, yeah, my muse. So I'll see you guys in August. Bye.